Hey, Qual Bros, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you guys here, and I hope you guys are doing well. With the addition of custom games and the fact that now we can play as any faction against any faction with any faction on our team, I figured it'd be a good time to do a little video here going over each of the factions in the game and ranking them from worst to best. It'll be a good time here. I'm, uh, I've been working on this video. It took me quite a bit to actually work on this because I had to play as each faction actually get you know, footage for each faction um, and each of their kind of strengths and weaknesses and things like that. So um, it'll be a good time. And I do just want to say quickly, guys, that this is only in the context of custom games. This isn't really ranking them in the context of their own campaigns because custom games just changes things up a lot because, again, you can play as any faction against any faction. So it tends to be whatever factions have the most powerful weapons and vehicles tend to dominate. You know, Moscow um, tanks aren't really seen that often because they just run into Panthers and, and late game 76 Shermans from, uh, you know, premium stuff. So it, it kind of screws things up, but it's not always the case that the early wars get the short end of the stick, but we will be going over that right now. So without anything else, let's jump right into it. Starting off with my opinion, the worst faction, Tunisia Axis. So Tunisia Axis, it's pretty obvious why this is at the bottom of my list here. It does a lot of things really, really well, but it's just not enough and it doesn't do enough things great compared to the other campaigns it just doesn't have the firepower on the ground that other campaigns uh like normandy or berlin or even moscow really does um it does have in my opinion one of the best if not the best sniper in the game right now the carcano sniper is unbelievable so if you were for some reason playing around with just snipers and just wanted to use snipers that is your go-to at least until the lee infield sniper comes out um later on in the uh allies campaign but right now it is the the carcano sniper is fantastic it has motorcycles which motorcycles can be really really good for getting around maps quickly um especially on the conquest maps and things like that and also just for locking down a couple areas getting some cheeky you know kills wiping some squads things like that the mgs on those motorcycles can be very deadly and then some of the smgs are actually fantastic as well the Carcana, or excuse me, the Carcana. The Beretta M1, I think, is a hidden gem in this campaign. I really think the Beretta is amazing. Um, the later M38 Beretta is also fantastic, in my honest opinion. I really do enjoy that. And then, of course, the uh, the OVP is good as well. So overall, guys, this campaign is good. Its fighters are also pretty solid. But it just, other campaigns either have what it has, or it does, or they do what it does, but better. So... I really got to just rate this one down at the very bottom of the totem pole. I think this campaign really struggles in its own campaign, let alone in other campaigns and against other campaigns. So um, that is why I'm going to have to put this down at the bottom. And I really don't think too many people are going to disagree with me on this one here. So let's move on to the next one, number seven. That's right. Tunisia Allies going with the Tunisia Axis right next to it. I mean, this campaign is also just not that good, guys. And it makes sense. They're our youngest campaigns. They have the least toys to play with. And while I do think this campaign, again, has some really good things about it, its downsides are just too much to be able to put it above the other campaigns in the game, especially the ones that have really high-powered things like Normandy and Berlin. So, I mean, you got to say here, guys, right? Like, it doesn't have good semi-autos. The best semi-auto in this campaign is the M1 Garand and... It's just not good enough, right? And it's so hard to outfit your your whole squads with those weapons because they cost so many silver orders. You just don't see them that often. Um, and, and you can use the SMGs in the squads, which are very powerful, but they're also in Normandy. So it's not a huge advantage. And yes, the SBD is fantastic. And the SBD is a highlight and a good thing about this campaign. It is not one of those things that is going to make or break the campaign, right? I, I gotta just put it lower because... It just doesn't have enough, right? The Lee infields are fantastic and they work really well and they make this campaign a blast to play. But when you put a Lee infield up against an FG42, it loses 99 times out of 100, you know what I mean? So I really got to say, guys, um, this campaign just isn't quite able to do it. Again, just like the, uh, the Axis, the motorcycles are good, but they're not good enough to carry the campaign. And the other weapons are the same thing. They're just not good enough to carry the campaign. Um, I'm not sure if you can call in smoke artillery if you're not on the Tunisia maps. I don't think you can, but even still, we're going to see smoke artillery coming later in the other campaigns. Anyway, at least I hope so. So um, again, got to put this one at number seven, rounding off as the two Tunisia campaigns as the worst campaigns for custom games. Again, it makes sense 
there are they are our youngest campaigns but again let's move on to something that is not tunisia so number six on our list i'm going with moscow allies and yes i know there are a lot of good things about this campaign that are fantastic and we'll talk about them but i think the biggest thing about this is that when you take those things outside of this campaign and start putting them up against other campaigns they start to feel less powerful while yes inside this campaign they are obscene and i do think that actually inside this campaign i think the allies might have a slight advantage but when it comes down to it once you take it outside of the campaign i think that advantage severely falls off while i don't think that moscow axis fall off nearly as hard and that's why i'm putting the allies below the axis here so let's talk about those things um by the way great spray down from me there um let's talk about those things right so the svt the avs both good rifles at least the svt is i kind of hate the avs in my opinion but um regardless they're both in berlin so it's not really a huge advantage there um the ptrs really doesn't do anything outside of this campaign because while yes it will destroy any campaign um specific tanks any moscow axis tanks it really struggles against tanks that are not from this era right it really was not that good and that's kind of a big reason why the ax or the allies get the panzerfaust in berlin because they really need it to deal with stuff like the panther and yes historically the ptrs did did give panthers a lot of trouble but that's only from the side and if you're able to get to the side of a panther with this thing i mean the panther is probably just easier to blow up with an explosive pack so like you're not really benefiting yourself using the ptrs anyway and yes you can still shoot infantry with it and i love shooting infantry with it and i still play this faction right i think it is um still good but regardless guys here it just doesn't do as well in other campaigns the il2 i think the il2m from berlin is just as good if not better than the il2 from this campaign i think the fighters from berlin are probably a lot better um again and so a lot of the stuff that is good in this campaign just doesn't really translate well outside of the campaign and that's why i'm going to rate it so low here and yes the ppsh the ppd both good weapons fantastic weapons but they're in berlin right why would you play this campaign over berlin when the ppsh is earlier unlock and easier to get in berlin as compared to moscow so again i'm gonna have to just say moscow allies is not quite as good as these other campaigns let's move on to number five on our list the number five moscow axis again following its little brother the moscow allies um like i was saying guys i think that moscow axis translates outside of the campaign much better because of its mgs and its semi-auto rifles like the zh29 uh, i think it is and as well as a lot of the premium squads i think the mg30 is one of the best premium squads um one of the best just squads in the entire game that this squad is absolutely ridiculous um so but but just to uh just to talk about this a little bit here guys again stuff just translates well from this campaign outside of it vehicles don't um unfortunately for it um at least the ground vehicles the tanks and whatnot but the uh the air vehicles do fairly well in my opinion of course it's just you know more more bf 109s and things like that but more specifically the stukas i think do very well outside of this campaign while the ground actually does decently the mg13 is in one is in my opinion one of the best lmgs in the game i don't know why people don't like it i don't know why everybody talks about the ppd and the ppsh but nobody talks about the mg13 being absolutely bonkers good um and and so i really think that this campaign does very well and then of course with the zh29 and um of course the mkb sniper absolutely fantastic so those are kind of the things that i think make this campaign very good outside of moscow itself they're things that make this campaign be able to fight against stuff like normandy and um, normandy axis allies berlin stuff and so overall guys i think it is absolutely fantastic um and this campaign while not being the best is definitely a campaign that you can take and i think surprise a lot of people with it i think people kind of underrate this campaign and they think that oh it's just it's moscow it's gonna have a bunch of crap um, not great stuff but man the mkb is no joke right the lmgs from this campaign are no joke and the zh29 is a fantastic semi-auto rifle and so um, i think a lot of people discount stuff like that so overall great campaign very much so deserving of the fifth place and whenever i started making this i didn't think it'd be that good but the more i thought about it the more i was like mm, i think this deserves to be a lot higher so 
there you go number five let's move on to our finalists the top four um campaigns for custom games at number four we've got berlin allies that's right I think a lot of people might disagree with me on this one. Um, I think this might be my most controversial pick. But I'm going to tell you guys why here. So number one, um, the good semi-auto rifle in this campaign, um, you don't unlock until the very end, the AVT. That is the uh, best semi-auto rifle. It's the only weapon that can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with things like the FG-42. But the thing about this campaign, and the thing that I've noticed about custom games, is vehicles are really dominant. And I gotta say, guys, the vehicles in this campaign are really not that good. The T-3485 is good, of course, uh, but it's worse than the Panther. And the m while I do love, just doesn't do that well. And it's the air power where this campaign really lacks. It's got a good fighter with the Yak-9T, I think is what it's called. Um, but it has very limited ammo, which is a huge downside. And the other really big thing about it is it's, it's bombers just aren't that good. Like, yeah, the IL-2M is, is good, but it's not great. And I don't think the ground powerhouses with the PPSH really are able to do that well. Uh, yes, in this campaign, the Berlin allies are absolutely crazy. And I think Berlin allies actually perform really well in this campaign as compared to custom games with the PPSH. But if you take the PPSH and you start putting it in, um, you know, Tunisia or in Normandy, its power level really starts to fall off, at least if you're not on a map like Omer or something like that, because those medium to longer ranges it really starts to struggle. Well, again, in, in Berlin, it is fantastic. So, you know, maybe this would be moved up a little bit if you were only playing Berlin maps and custom games with everything available to you guys. But really, guys, I got to say, it just struggles. It really does. I've, I've not done as well as I thought I would do with the uh, Berlin allies in this campaign. And I really think it has to do a lot with the vehicles. And it has to do with a lot that this campaign is kind of centered around those assault squads with the PPSH, the PPD, things like that. And... I just think that those fall off when you start playing on bigger maps. Um, it doesn't have the mid-range firepower with its MGs because I don't think the DT is actually that good. I think it gets beat out by a lot of the LMGs in the game. And so it just really ends up struggling, in my opinion. And then, of course, its air power is just not that dominant. So I got to say, fourth place for the Berlin Ally. Still a fantastic campaign and still a campaign that you can do very well with. I play this campaign a lot. I love playing in the Yak-9T, but... It just doesn't have the overall firepower that the other three late war campaigns do. So let's move on to number three in our list. Number three, Normandy Axis. And this really just has to do with three things, guys. The FG-42, the FG-42-2, and the MP-43. Those are the three things. And I think those three things are such massive, major powerhouse weapons that they single-handedly make this campaign skyrocket all the way up to number three. Because all the things that I've been talking about, air power, you know, ground power, everything like that, they just aren't that good in this campaign. Yes, they have the Panther, but so does Berlin, and it's at level, like, 12 instead of level 32 or whatever. So, um, whatever, right? But, I mean, guys, the, the STG is absolutely crazy. It is fantastic. It single-handedly makes this campaign super good. And then along with the FG-42 and the FG-42-2, well, yes, they are in Berlin. And let's be real here. That is why Berlin is up at the uh, at the top two here. But you got to have this here because the FG-42 and the FG-42-2 and the STG, or excuse me, the MK, uh, no, it's, what is it? The MP-43. There you go. Uh, they just carry this campaign because the ground and uh, the other ground weapons and the other air vehicles and things like that, they just aren't able to do that much. But these weapons do, and that is why we're putting it this high. And the only reason, uh, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why we're putting this below Berlin um, Axis is because we know that the MP43 or the STG or whatever it is, is more than likely going to be coming to Berlin at some point in the future. And so I think it's pretty safe to say that we can put this uh, below Berlin Axis. So let's move on to number two here and uh, start finishing this video off. So number two, if you guessed it, 50-50 chance here, it is the Normandy Allies, the Americans. And no, I don't think I'm being biased here. For a long time, I thought this campaign was a lot worse than it was. But I think that inside this campaign, it does struggle a little bit more. But once you take it outside this campaign, it just gets absolutely ridiculous. It becomes basically unfair 
um, for a lot of reasons. And what it struggles with on the ground, which is a lot. I think the only weapon that is actually super worth using in this campaign is the BAR. I think all the other weapons really struggle in custom games. Like the, the M1 Garand is just not as good as other semi-automatic rifles in the game. I realize that it's blasphemy to a lot of you guys out there, but it just does not hold a candle. The M2 Carbine is basically a joke uh, compared to something like the FG42. And whenever you compare the other weapons in this campaign, they just aren't that good. The Thompson is unlocked earlier in Tunisia. Um, and yes, it is still good, but you don't get the M1928 variant yet. Although I assume in the future it will. And I'm kind of, you know, factoring that in a little bit here. But overall, guys, um, what it lacks for on the ground, it makes up for in its vehicles, right? In its air power, specifically. The P47 and the A20 single-handedly push this campaign all the way up to the top for me. Because the amount of times that I see people just destroying games with the P47 on maps in Tunisia or in Moscow, where these really open areas with the HVRs just absolutely demolishing entire teams, it is crazy it single-handedly makes this campaign like nearly unstoppable in my opinion it makes you have to uh bring a fighter just to deal with the p47s because if a good p47 player is left to their own devices they will just ruin entire games because of how unbelievably good the p47 and the a20 to a lesser extent are so um overall guys i gotta say that the air power and, and again not even I, I forgot to mention this too the p51 a lot of people really say the P-51 is bad and they try to say that it's not a good fighter. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like the P-51 the P is amazing. I think it's great. Its biggest um, downside is it lacks ammo. So I, I don't know. You guys are crazy. I think the P-51 is really, really good. And maybe that's, uh, maybe I'm being stupid there. But overall though, guys, the P-47 and A-20 carry this. The Jumbo is fantastic as well. Um, the Jumbo, while yes, it loses to the Panther and uh, that is really what you're going to be seeing from the Axis most of the time is the Panther. But even though it does lose to the Panther and it can't really fight the Panther, it takes a long time for the Panther to actually kill the Jumbo. And because of that, it makes it kind of easier for uh, the Jumbo to just kind of sit there and kill infantry while no one can really kill it. And so it can just still do a lot of damage even if it gets outclassed by uh, things like the Panther and stuff like that. So overall, guys, I got to say... The vehicle power of the Americans is what really separates them and makes them really dominant in custom games while they might struggle in their own campaign. Um, their ground forces are just not that good, um, aside from a few very select weapons. But again, they make up for it in the air and um, in the jumbo specifically. So there it is, guys. That's my opinion on number two. You guys might disagree, but let's move on to our finalist, of course, the Berlin axis the best faction for custom games in my opinion so number one the berlin axis and it has to do with their ground power their air power is not that great it is serviceable they've got some stukas and things like that with some good bombs um, and they will be getting some better planes as time goes on but really guys it, it is just these um excuse me the ground forces namely the fg42-2 the FG-42, and the MG-34 with the 75-round Mac because they are absolutely crazy. They all just carry. And we know, of course, again, the STG will be added to this campaign in the future, but even without that, it is absolutely crazy. You slap vertical recoil reduction on the FG-42-2, and the gun becomes unbelievable. It is a full-power rifle. It will one-shot enemies. It will slaughter. It is crazy. And the fact that you can put it on every trooper in the game is just absolutely insanity. It will just dominate. It doesn't matter how many P-47s the enemy team has, how many times you're getting bombed and blown up or mowed down by PPSHs. It does not matter. You spawn with another squad of FG-42-2s who will just nuke your team as well, right? It is, it is crazy how powerful those two weapons are, especially the FG-42-2. The FG-42 at least has some pretty heavy recoil, although it can be negated. But the FG-42-2, once you slap vertical recoil reduction on a soldier with it, it becomes a laser. I'm going to show a clip here of me in the practice range with my Normandy squad with the recoil reduction on um, on a soldier and then no, no recoil reduction on another one. And you can see, even without the recoil reduction, it is absolutely crazy. It is, it's, it's insane, right? I, I really think these weapons need to be nerfed. And that's not really the point of this video here. Um, so I won't really get into it, but... 
they single-handedly make this campaign absolutely crazy and then of course the mg34 with the 75 round mag is also fantastic and gives you some uh a little bit longer range firepower um, and more sustained fire and yes the ammo problem is true on the fg42 but you always have people that are building ammo supplies and things like that so it does doesn't become as big of a deal as you would initially think and combine this all with the fact that you still get to bring a panther along with your campaign you don't really have to worry about tanks that much because you can just jump in your panther blast some uh blast some tanks or something like that and then you're good to go so it really just makes this campaign it's got to be the number one for me i really just don't think anything else can be anywhere near as good because of those uh the ground firepower combined with just good enough for everything else or great when it comes to the panther so that's what i'm going with you guys let me know your guys' thoughts do you guys think i nailed this list or do you guys think i'm just totally off the mark and you think moscow or tunisia axis is number one and i'm totally wrong here let me know down below in the comments i'd love to hear you guys' thoughts but without anything else guys that's my list thank you guys so much for watching i do appreciate it um you guys are great if you guys want to jump in these custom games remember twitch.tv slash hey quadro i stream monday to thursday 5 p.m est to 9 p.m est love to have you guys over there playing some matches with us and you can also join our community discord to play some custom matches they're going on every once in a while maybe just play some pve play some pvp you know whatever it is you guys want to do the link for that is down in the description below without anything else thank you guys so much for watching i do appreciate it and i'll see you guys next time take it easy